much for being here. So um, as you all know, my name is Heather Ann Havenwood, and um, I'm the one that kind of put this whole thing together. And as AJ was talking about, I, what I want to talk to you about today is really what I call the magnetically attracting success, and it really is my story and my true story. And uh, we're talking about my book today, A Sexy Boss. That Sexy Boss, the book, is free for the next two days um, on Kindle. But more importantly, about I'll tell you more about that book later and, and why I was inspired to write it. So what I want to talk to you about is what I call success magnet forces here at the Success Magnet Seminar. It's kind of tempting, right? All right, so the main thing I want you to take away from my pr presentation today is what the ability of saying yes in the face of no. Who here has had an idea, concept, thing they wanted to do, they told somebody and then the person was like, that's not a very good idea. Who's had that? Okay, everyone, yeah. I've definitely had that a lot in my life and I think as an entrepreneur, you have that automatically. Any idea, concept, or information that you have that you say, hey, um, I love this, this is a great idea. Someone's like, oh, that, someone's already done that or that's stupid, no one's gonna buy that. You know, but then we look at different things like Facebook. Hey, let's do a social thing called Facebook. And everyone's going to like be on it for a while. Oh, that's kind of poor shit. And here we are, right? So this, I think, I believe is the number one success force or success magnet force that you as an entrepreneur, business owner, savvy person in the world can have. And I want to tell you a little bit about that. So my first story is what I call the bull in a china cabinet. So uh, as AJ was saying, yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I call I'm a hothead. Um, I definitely get that from my family, but I'll tell you a little bit my first experience of being a bull in a china cabinet. Um, so I was uh, going to college and I kind of ran out of funds. My dad called me one day and said, yeah, so we're paying for your school and that awesome place that you're living in. Yeah, not so much anymore, it's over. And I went, oh, well, what do I do? He's like, I don't know. So I said, okay, I'll figure I'll go get a corporate job because I heard those things called corporate jobs. They'll pay for your school. So I'm like 22 years old. The only job I've had at this time was like being a waitress or, you know, one of those like things. And so I go answer this ad for the company called Singular Wireless. Y'all ever heard of that? Okay, back, this is actually before that. And I go and I sit down with this quote unquote sales manager guy and I said, I'm here for the position of business to business sales. And he looks at me, he's like, I'm 21, 22. He's like, wait, you don't have a degree, you've only been a waitress and you want a business to business sales job? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, not so much. You're gonna be like customer service rep, we'll start you at the front, maybe answer the phones. I'm like, oh no, 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 that's not what I want because you won't pay for my school then. He's like, well, I don't think you understand what you're asking. So long story short, I made him a deal. I said, look, his name was Michael. Michael, I will become your first business to business sales rep at this young age, He's, and if I don't make it, you can fire me. He goes, well, that's good, because we have a quota. If you don't make it in 90 days, you're out anyway. And I said, great, well, why not, right? Who cares if I don't make it? And he looks at me and goes, all right, you're hired. So here I am, like 21, 22 years old. The average business to business sales rep was around 40 and mainly male. And I walk in and I'm like, here I am. And I actually stayed there for four years. And I was the first woman to actually become the top 1% sales rep in the nation. And I was stuck into this really, they you know, these territories, right? We had territories in New York and LA and Dallas. I was stuck in a little town called Fort Worth, Texas. Y'all heard of that? Well, Fort Worth, Texas was the, wasn't Dallas proper. We weren't allowed to go to Dallas. We weren't allowed to step into that city. So here I am, 21, 22 years old, don't know any better. I was literally given a telephone, a cellular phone, and the yellow pages. And this is the first direct response situation that I ever did. And again, I didn't even know what direct response was. I was given um, an account. They called it the debt account. Lockheed Martin, you ever heard of that? Lockheed Martin's a major, major um, company, about 30,000 employees at the time in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. And I was told that it was a debt account. There was no money in the account. And, you know, I can manage it, but I can't make any money. And I said, okay, how do I tap into 30,000 employees? Well, there's this thing called fax machine. <laughs> and I figured out a way to email 
this is like, like 1999, by the way, 99. I figured out a way, if I could do like a one page flyer and have everyone email all their like friends of friends inside the company, right? Because I can't do an email blast to Lockheed Martin, but I could like email the engineer department, they'll engineer, they'll email their friends, like that, right? So I created this little flyer and I told people to email their like coworkers. And on there, I said, if you want to order, you don't have to call me. You can fax back your order. And in, the, in this big bullpen of an office of corporate America, I sat way in the back in the corner next to the printer and the fax machine on purpose. No one was back there. And that's when I first discovered direct response marketing. So I sent out this email broadcast to about 10 people. And next thing I know, they started email to their coworkers and their coworkers and their coworkers. And I started creating what I call the fax machine romance. I literally would come in in the morning around 10 o'clock and I would take my little fax machine orders and I'd press them in the computer and press enter. And then by three o'clock, I was at the pool. And people couldn't understand it. Here I am, like 24, my school's being paid for, I'm going to school at night, I got a nice infinity, I'm single, and they're like, I don't get it, what are you doing? You just have this small little Lockheed Martin and they're, they, they don't have any money. I'm like, well, that's not what the fax machine says. So right then, that was my first experience. Now what's interesting about corporate America, which I didn't know at the age of 24, is one day I get called into my office after I received my my uh, big, you're number one in the country, and I don't know how you did it, but you know, sales say that you're number one in the country at 10,000 reps. Um, we give you a little war and all that stuff. Shake the president's hand. And uh, I come back from that trip that they gave me, and a month later, I was fired. <laughs> Wait, I was told when I was younger, you work hard, you make the company money, and they love you. Help me understand. And she said, well, you made a lot of money for the company. We really appreciate that, but it's too much. So that was my first experience. Basically what happened is I had created a direct response marketing campaign so easy that money was coming in the door and they figured they could fire me and get rid of like a lot of money and just hire an assistant just to manage it. So I was out. And I was devastated. I didn't know what to do, but I did get my degree out of it. They did pay for it, which was kind of nice. But this was my first experience of direct response marketing. And I had no idea that it was direct response marketing or email marketing, in that matter. So here's what I uh, kind of my, my trait that I learned from that particular story and some other stories, which is focus exclusively on thoughts you have positive associations with and not the naysayers. So in that situation for me was, you know, obviously the naysayer of corporate America. And in that moment, I made a choice. I would never, ever, ever, ever work for corporate America again because I didn't want to be able to build their business and then have them take it away from me in seconds. Who has experienced something like this? Yeah, I mean, I built this whole like direct marketing campaign. They just like, it's done. So that brings me to when I moved to Florida. So a few months after that, I actually moved to Florida, and this is how I got into the direct response business. Um, at that the age now 25, 26, right after 9-11, I get moved to Florida, Orlando, Florida. This is where I started to travel around the country, um, speaking in real estate, entrepreneur, how to buy and sell houses. I would come to Vegas and teach you guys how to buy and sell houses. And during this time period, about seven years, I actually am producer for 450 events like this, bigger, smaller, everything in between for direct response markers like Ron Legrand, Robert Allen, have y'all heard these guys? So I was the one helping create these events like AJ and uh, speaking on stages and converting that. This is what I started to do for about seven years while I was in Florida. Well, one day I get this phone call from my mom and uh, <laughs> she didn't understand what I was doing, right? She's like, what do you do? I'm like, well, I, I travel a lot. Well, I know, but who do you work for? I'm like, well, I don't really work for anybody necessarily. Like, well, I don't understand. What do you do? I'm like, well, mom, I'm an entrepreneur. And that was the moment. She's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, look. You know, and she like literally hung up the phone, right? And I'm like, oh, God. So about, I don't know, it was like a day or two later, I'm driving down the street. She calls me, answers the phone, and she's like, now, honey, now she's from Arkansas. I'm, I'm born, blood, Texas, Arkansas family. Now, honey, 
what I found. I found a sweet little secretarial job. It was about $8 an hour. It's near Hot Springs, about 20 miles out, and I think they got benefits. I think you should come and get that position. And I'm like, mother, right? She's like, I think this entrepreneurial thing is just not going to work out for you, and I'm just really scared. And they got a great little secretarial job in a manufacturing company. I think you'd be perfect at it. And I'm like, Mom, do you know what I've done with my life? And she's like, I just don't want you to, you know, what she's going on, I'm right. And I try to, I get off the phone with her, but then about two days later, I get a phone call from my uncle. Now, my uncle is uh, on my father's side, not my mom's side, but my mom called him. And he says, now, this is your Uncle Robert, Heather, and I know that your father was an entrepreneur, but he's different. Now, you can't be an entrepreneur, too. This is not a good thing. I'm like, Uncle Robert, I haven't talked to you in six years. Why are you calling me? And again, it was the same thing. They just, they, you know, wanted to play safe. I just found it really funny because my dad is an entrepreneur. I was, I was born and raised in an entrepreneurial world. Uh, but at the same time, you know, my family didn't want me to do it. So that was my small town secretarial job. Obviously, I did not take the secretarial job in uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas. So focus on the freedom, what you want. The reason why I became an entrepreneur and why I told my mom that day no is not because entrepreneurialism necessarily is what I wanted. It was freedom. You know, I wanted freedom. That experience to me in corporate America was an entrapment. And I really wanted to make sure that I focused on the freedom that I wanted and to continue to learn, to continue to educate myself and associate myself with people that were on the same path as me. Does anybody kind of resonate with that at all? And that's why you're here, right? And thank you for that. I really appreciate it. So that was one of the biggest things from my life that I was able to, what I call, magnetize my success. Another trait that I, I call um, success magnet trait that we've all been in this experience, which is denial of choice makes us a victim. When we feel we don't have a choice, that's really a victim, what I call victimization. But affirmation of choice makes you magnetic. No matter what situation you're in, you have a choice. And I'll be talking about later about my foreclosure, bankruptcy, and how I was completely wiped out. And, you know, and it's, it's what I call heartening. And it's also a time when you, what I, for me, fell on my knees going, what do I do? Do I completely deny that I have a choice? Or do I choose something differently? And that brings me to this. So I, um, Back in 2004, five and six and seven, I was in Florida and I was in what I call the real estate boom. I'm sure a lot of you guys were in maybe around that. So from 2001 through 2006, um, I was in the real estate, of central Florida, buying and selling real estate, how to buy houses, flipping them, foreclosures, all that kind of fun stuff and making great money. And at, you know, I was young, I was in late 20s, early 30s and I didn't know that the market could switch. You know, no one told me that. So here I am just thinking this kind of lasts forever, right? This up and up and up and 25% just goes up all the time, right? This is normal. As my dad tried to tell me over and over again, it's, it's going to end. I'm like, no, look at it, it has ended in seven years. <clears throat> so um, during that time frame, I started a few businesses. Some of them failed, some of them didn't. But around 2004, I got into the internet. And I started to learn direct response marketing online. I learned email marketing. I learned conversion. I learned um, all the squeeze pages, lead pages, all that stuff, affiliate marketing, around 2004, 2005. Um, I was doing consulting for a lot of different speakers in that space. And I had a con particular client that wanted me to be their business partner. Has anybody here been in consulting before? And they're like, hey, I want to do business with you versus like pay you for your consulting? Yeah, okay. I got sucked in on that. I was like, oh, this is great. I can like run the business. I can run it because I'm an implementer. And he came to me and he's like, I have this idea. I want to teach real estate. I've done really good deals, but I don't know how to do it. And you do. And why don't I just be your partner? And you just do it. And then you take half the money. And I was like, oh, this is great. Oh my God, yeah. And uh, I said, okay, so I built his company, I built his site, I built his list, I built his product, I built his seminar, all with his name on it and his brand. And I thought, this is great, right? I'll just run the company and he can be the front and this is awesome. Until one day, <laughs> on December 5th, 
8 a.m. Uh, 2005. Actually, I'll never forget that. I walk into my office and at my home, and uh, all the computers are gone. Everything's gone. The bank accounts are wiped out. Merchant accounts are gone. Product, not sure. Lists, nowhere to be seen. Everything got switched. And along with my assistant, <laughs> he was gone too. Um, and it was devastating. And that was 2005, and the market started turning backwards, 2006, in Central Florida here in Vegas too. And for 2006, I was wiped out. Bankruptcy, foreclosure, all of it gone. Because I had all my eggs in that basket, and I believed him. And I didn't have any recourse. And so, um, who's a lawyer here? You? It was because he was a lawyer, so don't do, just kidding. Um, I wouldn't say don't do business with all lawyers, but I would say not all. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I, I, my dad did say that. That's my one thing my dad said. Didn't I tell you not to do business with a lawyer? I'm like, yeah, I kind of forgot that one, dad, sorry. So at this point, I was pretty much wiped out. Now, why am I telling you this? Is because I had a choice again in that moment. I could go get a secretarial job in Hot Springs right then and there and just say, it's all good, right? But at that moment, I really decided being self-reliant was the key for me. It's not necessarily about being an entrepreneur. It's being self-reliant. I think there's a difference for myself. And being an entrepreneur is a choice to be the CEO of my life. And this is where things really started to turn for me. And it took a couple of years. It wasn't overnight, believe me. Um, <clears throat> one of the first things I had to get really real about myself went in that space was what I call killing my excuses. I had a lot of excuses with uh, why I wasn't in the front of the room, why I wasn't creating my own product, why I was doing, and wasn't doing the things that I knew to do. And I had a lot of the stories stop me. I wasn't good enough, I didn't have this, I didn't have that, I didn't have enough deals under my belt. Whatever the excuses are, it doesn't work when you're an entrepreneur. You literally can't even have them in the space. But I did for a while. And one of those, actually, is I want to share with you here, um, MJ Williams, she's the person here, she's, she's deaf, and I want to acknowledge her for being here today. Because that tells, that tells me and you that it doesn't matter what your past is or your current, you can still choose to be self-reliant and an entrepreneur. So I want to acknowledge her for the courage that she, he, she's here today for her and being an entrepreneur and her self-reliance. Thank you. I want to give you a look. One of the things I had to overcome was when I was 13 months old, I had a situation that happened in my home and I stopped talking. So from age 13 months old to about seven years, I was a quiet baby. Everyone thought I was just a good, good baby. Well, what happened is I just kind of stopped communicating. And so starting at age six, seven, all the way to 14, 15, I was in speech therapy. So I was born and raised in Texas, but if you notice, I don't have an accent. And that's because I was, you know, every single week I would go to speech therapy. I was extremely shy. I didn't, can you believe that? I know people don't believe that. I was extremely shy. Um, I got an F on a book report once because I wouldn't speak in front of the room. Uh, I failed spelling. <laughs> um, I was just really, really shy in school and I didn't, didn't talk. Um, and I, like I said, I was in speech therapy for a long, long time until about 15, 16 years old, I, I, think we, I think I stopped then. And here I am, a speaker. Doesn't really make sense, does it? Um, that's one thing I had to really overcome, is being able to be in front of people, be able to speak, feel confident about speaking, mainly because for the first seven years of my life, I just didn't talk. Um, and when I was in speech therapy, it was something that was embarrassing for me. Um, and now, you know, now, what my mission is in life is really to empower other people. My mission is to empower people to become self-reliant, self-confident, and to bring their ideas and their dreams into reality. That's what I'm about. That's what Sexy Boss is about. That's what this event is about, is helping in people to empower them to bring their ideas to reality. And this comes from my dad, go big or go home. <laughs> I was born in Texas. Obviously, my dad was an oil man, and uh, he was an oil man in the 80s, and then he bought the largest retail office supply chain in southwest Florida, uh, all of Florida, but the south, whole southwest part of the country, southeast. And uh, then he also created and developed um, a ski resort in Kadrona, New Zealand. Y'all ever heard of that? Maybe? 
Kadrona? OK. So my dad developed that. And uh, when I was like six years old, he always went to New Zealand. And I, I asked him years later in life, I'm like, I don't get it. What? Ski resort? He's like, it was about the creation. You're staring at a mountain. And this is back in the 70s. There's nothing there. In fact, they can't even get a road there. They like snowmobiled in, right? So like looking, he doesn't imagine like looking at a mountain and to get there, you had to get a snowmobile in, just a random mountain and go, I'm going to build a whole resort there. You know, that's really cool. So he and about three other guys came together and developed this entire, uh, now a booming, booming resort, Kadrona. He sold it off a few years later, but he built it, and that's what he meant by go big or forget it, you know? And I, th I think he's really proud of that, and I'm very proud of him, too, for doing that. So it's a big deal for me, and I, I believe that. Now, this is, since it's a copywriting event, I thought I'd do a great... Um, Quote by Dan Kennedy, copywriter himself, the opposite of wealth attraction is wealth inhibition. I love that. You like that? It's pretty hot. I just, I just love that quote. OK, so what I call the story of the CEO, be, the, being the CEO of your life, you get to choose everything. Now, there's a good thing and a bad thing with that, right? When you get to choose everything, that means you're responsible for everything. And that means everything. <laughs> And this is where I think my life changed, which was learning, marketing, and copywriting became the number one skill set for me to take myself out of bankruptcy. Because I really had a choice at that moment, 2007 and 8. Do I just say, you know, Mom, you're right. I should have never done this. should have been an entrepreneur. I should just go work at Starbucks and forget it. Or do I really begin to change my life and be the CEO of my life? And that's where marketing and copywriting started to come in. I knew about Dan Kennedy. I knew about Joe Sugarman all those years. But I didn't take it seriously like I knew about them. But I didn't really understand the concept of the true marketing. So this is how it happened. So at the end of my 2006 and 7, I lost my house and put, gave it back to the bank and lived out of my car with my dog. It was kind of fun. Um, and I moved to Marco Island. Who here has heard of Marco Island? Oh, yeah, it's great. So if you haven't heard of Marco Island, it literally is a tiny island. It's four mile by two mile radius island. There's nothing on it. Walmart's like 20 miles out. And it's the southwest part of Florida. And there's just nothing out there except tourism um, and old people. Like, <laughs> what can I say? I was, the average age of the island was 80. Just, just, there was like three of us that were in their 30s. We're like, we got to hang out, you know? We're the only ones that are alive. Um, there's three Walgreens, though, and there's no Walmart and no grocery store, but three Walgreens because they got to get their drugs. So at Marco Island, I hung out there, and I thought, okay, I got to create something. I got to create a business. And um, so I started tried to create a dog walking business for a little bit, believe it or not. And this is why I cracked up, because like, the dog sitting dog walking business it didn't work, because no one went to work. Right? I'm like, oh, yeah, this works. Right? Everyone's got a little dog. They all got little dogs. They're like, well, no one works, so everyone's just taking care of their dogs all day. So I was like, okay, that doesn't work, right? So was, I thought to myself, okay, I know information marketing. I know internet marketing. I don't want to go teach that because I don't have a business doing that. So what is something that I can teach that I know I'm an expert in um, and have specific knowledge in that I, know, I can feel confident talking about. I mean, I've done real estate, but the real estate market's down. I don't want to do that. So what is it? What is something that I can really speak on? Seduction? Well, yeah. So seduction. I started creating uh, a dating company, teaching men how to date women. I know that. That's an expertise I know how to do. So as of starting 2006 all the way to today, I have a, actually a successful online dating. It's called datingtriggers.com and only date younger women. And I teach men how to date, talk to, have a conversation with women. Why? Because I know how to do that. So that's actually what, what I call the power of the pen. I literally took my pen and started to create product and information, or I call the power of word doc, right? And that's where I started to build my business and build my life back out of the bankruptcy, which was with the power of a pen. So no one can tell you that, well, you don't, you don't know anything or you can't sell anything that you already know. Because believe me, I sold information on how to talk to women. It's not that hard, guys, by the way. 
But <clears throat> so then came 2000, uh, 10, well, 10, 11, I guess, well, a year ago now. And I t met Joe Sugarman, and we met, met a few years ago. We t started talking about this time last year, and he's like, you've got to write your story. You really need to write your story. And I was like, I don't know how to write a story. I don't know how to write my book. How do I do this? So I uh, actually, where's Tony? Is he here? Flores? There he is. So Tony Flores, I, um, I hired him. He's a copywriter. And he goes, okay, well, I can't write your story for you. You've got to kind of give me something. So within 30 days, four weeks, I gave him a full transcript of my book, and within 30 days, he brought it back. So in 60 days, we rewrote my whole story. Is that right? That was right. Yeah? You got four weeks. I had four weeks. That was our goal. So I wrote my book. I basically wrote the book in 30 days. He edited it in 30 days, and 60 days later, I had Sexy Boss. So that, you can write your book and you write your story very fast. And that is something that I learned after my bankruptcy. I learned that ideas that you have in your head one, my number one thing was I didn't tell anybody anymore what they were. I just did them. I didn't ask people, should I create the book Sexy Boss? Do you like the book Sexy Boss? I don't know. If, you know, I don't know if I like it. Do you like, well, you like my story? I didn't ask people. I didn't ask people, hey, the Success Magnet Seminar, do you like it? Would you go? I mean, I don't know. Would you kind of go? I don't know if I want to do it. I mean, I thought about doing it like 30 days from now. No. I said, I want to do this. Let's do it. Let's pick a date. And you just take action. And if no one showed up, then I would tell you that it would fail. But <clears throat> really, my strength out of all this in entrepreneurial land was this. Have an idea, implement it, and go. And if it fails, it's OK. Do another one, and do another one, and do another one, and just do another one. That's what I'm really good at. My next success magnet force, and the last one, is what I call the power of mentorship. Tomorrow morning, um, Joe and I are going to talk about this a lot, too. We're going to come up and talk about mentorship and the real true power of it. Because throughout these years that I've been talking about, really honestly, I had a lot of mentors along the way. I had a lot of friends, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs that kind of lifted me up when I was discouraged. And they would say, you know, you have a choice. You can either be an entrepreneur and keep going, or you can stop. And they always gave me that choice. And mentorship, I think, is one of the most powerful things that anyone can have in their life. And that mentorship is not usually a parent. It might not be your spouse. It might not be your uncle. Obviously, I'm not my uncle. Um, it most likely and usually isn't the people closest to you. For me, it's definitely not. The people that are closest to me that I choose to have be close to me are people that I choose to have, which Joe and many other people in this room are what I call my dear friends, mentors, and mentees. And going back to the story of reality with this event, honestly, uh, this event came out of, um, it came out, well, I'll tell you this in a minute. It, it came out of something that it was tragic, and this event came out of it. But be first, first, when I started creating this event, we asked the question, Joe and I asked the question, you know, what's the idea of this event? The idea of this event and the videos and everything that's going to happen after this event is to give people, you, and to empower you, the number one skill that has created the wealthiest people I know. Really. These are people that supported our event. Joe Vitale started as a copywriter. Yannick Silver started as a copywriter. Perry Marshall. Alex Mendozian started as a copywriter. Joe Polish, copywriter. John Carlton, copywriter. David Garfinkel, copywriter. Kevin and Bon, bon Halberg, sons of Gary Halberg. All these people supported the event. Now, all these people not, are not necessarily ending up as a copywriter, but they all got their start there. That's a key. And they all wanted to make sure that they knew that they supported something that really brought in copywriting to the world. It's pretty cool, huh? You probably all know these people from, from other things. Perry Marshall's SEO, Alex and Josie's doing Google Hangouts now. But he got his start in copywriting. So this success magnet event was born during the morning of a death. And I'll just tell you the quick story. So in June of this year, my birthday is June 27th, just in case you all want to give me a gift next year. Uh, June 27th, and on June 28th, my mom died. And I was actually out of town. It was unexpected. Uh, actually, I talked to her two days before. She was fine. She was at home. And I went on a little mini vacation for my birthday in San Francisco. And I got a call about two days after that. I was literally two ways, you know, I was in the mountains. And they, someone Skyped me, and they said, hey, your, your mom was found. 
found dead at her house. And on the day of my birthday, which I say, thank you, Mom, for not on my, on my birthday, thanks. Um, and so I came rushing home, of course, and, and took care of everything. And about, after, about a week after the funeral, I started to feel like when something like this happens in your life for me, I learned that your priorities get really straight really fast. And I started to see all the things I hadn't done that I wanted to do and that my mom didn't get to see. And one of them was this event. One of them was creating an event that I can help empower people going after their dreams. And literally about two weeks after the event, two weeks after her funeral, uh, which was on her birthday, uh, I created this event like out of a conversation with Joe. And two days later, you know, bought the GoDaddy, boom, 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 flew out to Vegas, looked at all the different hotels, figure out which one we're going to do it in, and here we are. That, I think, is a key piece of all entrepreneurism, is things are going to happen, situations are going to happen, but are you going to create life after death? So <clears throat> all of this to say is the power of saying yes in the face of no. That's the whole point for me uh, of this event, what I want to power all of you. All of you have businesses. All of you are successful in your own right. People here are successful in their own right. And uh, they came here to really support other people and empower them to go to the nether level. Go big or go home. Go bigger than what you are. And uh, that's what I want to empower myself to do, but also empower you to do. I had someone here, I think it was Christian Torres. Where is he? Is he here? Hey, Christian. So Christian. Uh, about emailed me about a week and a half ago, and uh, he lives here in Vegas. He's got a few meetup groups, and he goes, "Hey, I want to promote your event. I know it's last minute." I was like, "Absolutely not. Please, you know, please promote our event locally." And then he um, emailed me a few days later and goes, "Hey, I had somebody ask, you know, why is it so inexpensive, or why are so these great people coming to Vegas, or what? I don't understand." And I said, "You know, Christian, it's he goes. He asked me how to respond. I go, "Here's how you respond. Don't, because they don't get it, and it's okay." The people that understand what this event is about and who the people are who are on stage this weekend, they get it and they're, the, they're supposed to be here. If they don't understand who it is, it's okay. They can go home. And the people that are attracted to this event, they are success magnets already, and they say yes in the face of no. So that is my story, a true story actually, is how you can magnetically attract success.